in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in him was life and the life was the light of men the dominion mandate is inside that's why the Bible said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world blessing of your life today yeah. I confer your mighty hand of blessing upon their lives yeah. welcome to expand your world with pastor David Willie. okay lift your hands just for one minute just pray in the spirit or whatever way you can pray you start doing that the power start intensifying is generation that's what prayer does power generation calm down for a few minutes okay your Christian life might have problem with one of them or both so generation prayer life waiting on God you know things like spending time with him generation worship life but the fuel you feed into the generator into your spirit that helps the Holy Spirit born that supernatural energy is God's word. The, the, the different uh, systems of power generation have some form of fuel they, they consume in order to release that power. Some consume solar energy, some uh, fossil energy, fossil fuel like petrol and the rest of them. Some is chemical energy. So you have some power plants that are fed with green leaves, sugar canes, and they convert that to energy. What you feed the human spirit is God's word. Man shall not live by bread alone because bread feeds, feeds the physical body. The human spirit does not live on bread. It lives on every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, if you're having problem with power, maybe you have not been feeding your spirit. You feed your body, feed your mind with junk magazine, with uh, Coco Master, with Timaya. Where are all of them? Flavor. You feed your soul with all the carnal things, but you don't feed your spirit with spiritual food, the energy. So just like your body, you won't be strong now if you've not been eating. You won't have energy. You won't be strong. Even if you're not sick, you still, you'll not be strong. So... A human spirit that is starved of God's word or revelation is depleted of energy. When it comes to fighting the enemy or confronting the challenges of life, you find that you're weak. You say, I'm always weak. Eh, this is what is causing it. But if you feed your spirit, the next thing is that you need to fan that thing into fire. You do with prayer. You fan it into spiritual force. So that when you speak, your words can move mountains. It's your prayer life. The time you spend with God. Your worship life. But that's not why I'm saying this. Because we're about to. I'm not going to talk to you about transmission. Because once you have power, if you have it in Kainji, until you're able to transmit it to my house, my system will not work, my fridge will not work, my TV will not work. So there is generation, and now there is transmission. And there are three ways the power of God is transmitted. And there are also three ways electricity is transmitted. Because all truths are parallel. Anything you find in the spiritual will have a natural equivalence. And anything you find in the natural, there is a spiritual equivalent. And of course, the spiritual rules the natural. What electricity is in the physical is a picture of what the power of God is in the spiritual. Let me give you an example. The heaven where we are going, they don't use electricity. They don't use kainji dam. They don't use this kind of energy there. Yet there is constant electricity there. It's not this type. In that place, there is no solar energy. There is no sunlight. You will see a sun shining on that celestial city called heaven there's nothing like that yet there is light 
and there is no that night in that place. It's not like Nepal failure. What type of energy do they use there? It's called Shekinah. It's glory force, glory energy. When Moses was asked to build the tabernacle, he succeeded in bringing on earth the type of energy they used to lighten the whole heaven. What happened is that the, 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 the tabernacle he designed had an outer court without a roof. There was no roof covering it. The outer court had sunlight, solar energy lightening that place. So that part now, when, he's, when the sun goes down, that place gets dark. Then there's another compartment, three compartments. The one after the outer court is called the holy place. It has a roof, very thick roof, about three layers of roof, roofing. The topmost one is called badger skin. So it's a dark place. So Moses was told to put seven golden candles. Somebody saw a vision of seven golden candles. There. That's where you find it in the holy place. But what type of energy do they burn there? Chemical energy. They burn olive oil. The way you burn kerosene or you burn fuel in your car, they burn chemical energy. So they have to go get olives, mash them, squeeze the oil, and pour it into the lamp. And then those seven candles born with it. That's what gives light in the holy place. Then they have the last place called the holiest of all. And that's where they, you take the blood to go and get, you know, atonement for the nation of Israel. Very dark. But yet you enter, it is brighter than any other place. What type of energy provides light in that holy place? Uh -huh. It's called Shekinah. That's the word they call it, they use for it. Is the, they, they, they call it the glory of God. But when we say the glory of God, sometimes, you know, you might have your own idea about it. It's a type of energy that emanates from God's being. You see, this almighty God that you and I are worshipping, actually, the Bible says God is light. is both spiritual and literal. In the literal sense, the Bible says he dwells in unapproachable light. One translation said, light that no one can approach. To the extent that the angels that are around this throne use their wings to cover their eyes while they are worshipping him. There's a light that emanates from him. So the throne of God in heaven, can, you, can I get a seat? Can I get a seat? I've been shown these things. Three times I've been shown this in a vision and I was amazed and I went to the Bible to it's not enough to illustrate God's throne, but it's just to make an example. The throne of God in heaven is not a seat sitting on the floor of heaven. That's the way most of us think. If we get there, by the time we get to the throne room, like you see a king, you see his seat. No. The throne of God is up to 3,000 miles high. The way you look at it is this way. The way you look up to the sun. It's so high that almost every part of heaven you can look and see it. You can be in the eastern part and you look in that direction. You see, you see this like the way you see your son. Light emanating. That's the glory that's coming from his face. That's actually what gives light to that city. And under that throne is a river. There's a fountain that starts from under it. It flows and breaks into four directions. It's called the river of life. That's what waters the whole, you know, celestial city. From on top of that, you know, when Isaiah saw God, he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. We don't have a, an idea how high it is. That's why when they draw the tabernacle of Moses and they draw the Shekinah. You have the mercy seat, but that glory sits on top, on top, on top of it. Hey, can you show one of those pictures and that glory shooting up into the sky? Because that's actually how it is in heaven. Yes, look at it, look at it. Can you see how this is the, most, the tabernacle that Moses built? If you go inside, you see the glory on the mercy seat. But when you come outside, you can be many miles away. For example, you can be in VI. You look, you see the light. That is what is giving the children of Israel light when they were coming out of Egypt. They don't use lamps. 
they don't use touch light but in the night the whole camp has lights just like heaven how you see that one oh you see the one that shot up this literally how it is just that this is a a kind of small representation of the truth in heaven is so bright that no man is able to look on his face not even the angels not even the angels the ones that are close are given six wings so that they can use two to block their eyes use two to fly and two to block cover their feet to show reverence Do you know when you say you receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Is that, you remember the day of Pentecost? There were fire, clothing tongues of fire on their head. God made it visible. But whether you, you know, because the next day it wasn't visible anymore. Does he mean it has vanished? No. It's not inside them. That's what he means by you are the temple of the living God. So, I love the idea how you all come in here, we're laying hands on you. But the greatest thing we can help you to discover is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit that you are carrying it if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit you need to st stop looking for the answer outside let me ask you look at that again do you know where it's coming from from inside that tabernacle when the priest goes inside and gets to the mercy seat he sees it there that's why we are told that the, the, the two expression of the gifts of the holy spirit there is the spirit within and the spirit upon whenever they need to move because they were moving they were going to the promised land whenever they need to move moses makes a statement and god responds he says arise O god let your enemies be scattered that glory will move and start moving ahead of them and anything that will be a problem to them will slay that thing. When they get to where they need to rest, Moses will say, Return, O God, to your resting place. He will go back inside the ark. And then, of course, people like Moses, I mean, David started learning from all of that. That Holy Spirit is inside you. Everyone, put your hands on your belly. Hey, hey maybe I need to show you something. Where is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit in the human body? Ever put your hands here. Say my heart. He is not here. The biological heart that pumps blood is the one that is here. The spiritual heart is here. Put your hands. Say out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Take note because one day you might be, you might be make, trying to make a decision and you feel like a tightening here and you wonder what is going on it's, it's called you're not hearing a voice this is how the Holy Spirit speaks to people he talks too there's a voice called the small steel voice he talks like that but we're not talking about that one there's also the audible voice but we're not talking about that one a kind of tightening and a, 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 a no good feeling you just lose your peace this, I'm looking for different words to describe one thing. You just lose your peace because there are two signs. You just lose your peace. You just feel like there's something wrong, but you don't know what it is. You're not hearing a voice to explain to you, but there is that whatever. And is the Holy Spirit warning you not to proceed? He's inside. You're looking for the direction outside, but he's inside. Put your hands again here. A, a sudden sadness the peace lifts the joy goes you don't know why you are sad there's nothing that happened it's a warning that decision you're about to make will get you into big trouble if it's marriage you're going to cry later if you go ahead if it's a, a journey it means don't continue then there's another signal the same it's a sense of peace it's a sense of joy and there might be problem around but yet you have that serenity a sense of peace a sense of joy a feel good feeling i'm being careful with feeling because <laughs> but what i'm talking about is called intuition 
is the Holy Spirit telling you, I'm with you. I'm giving you a signal. Go ahead. That's why in the Old Testament, the priests carry it's something they wear on their chest. It's called the airport. Inside it, there are two stones they used to decide. You know, like when, when people go to native doctors or all this baba, they bring stones and throw. They are trying to do um, a divination to decide well, which direction the Holy Spirit is saying to go. Now, the real priests of God have two stones, precious stones. They put it in the airport. But when they need to find what God is saying, they bring it out. And when they go into the presence, the presence of God shines on one and lightens it. It means go ahead. Yes, signal. The other one means no signal. They use it to discern. Now, what I'm talking about is discerning the will of God. You need to learn to grow in that and learn that. Of course, there is also hearing the voice of God. We'll teach on that next year and give you, you know, how to be led by the Holy Spirit full and we have tapes on that you know there's a great book on that written by Kenny Hagen being led by the spirit everybody should read that book okay put your hands here again. say arise oh God let your enemies be scattered say arise oh God let the devil be subdued you see there is potential energy and there's kinetic energy what happens when Moses says this? Let God arise. And what? Let his enemy be scattered. This is David copying from Let them also that hate him flee from before him. This is David learning from Moses. Because he fought a lot of wars. Anytime that ark is being lifted, they want to start moving. Moses will say that and God will go and clear the way. Everyone lift your hands. Say, as I travel this December, within or outside Lagos, let the glory arise and clear the way. If there were robbers on the way, robbing, a mysterious thing will have to happen to them before you get there. Yeah. No, it's true. This is the truth. Okay, there's another one, they say. Everyone lift your hand. Say, say Lord, Lord, hide me in your pavilion. Hide me in your glory. You may get to where there is danger or things are going wrong. Do that. You can see this resident power can be released by speaking. That's the point I'm trying to make. It came to pass when the axe set forward, that's when it's about to move. Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and what? Let your enemies be scattered. And let them that hate thee do what? flee before. The next verse. And when they get to a resting place, where it will rest, what will he say? He said, return, O Lord, what? Unto the many thousands of Israel. Just return to your resting place. I think there's a song. <laughs> you need to clap well there. <laughs> you know, Moses. Moses, that man, that man. Is one of my few men in scripture that are my models. Jesus is ultimate. I'm talking about men that walk with God. Men that God even called his friends. Men that knew the glory of God. One of them is Enoch. This kind of men, Paul, the Apostle, this kind of men, they are the ones that I set before me as a model. And, and, and they keep, you know, I look at their life, I can't relax. Because I see, I see that I have not. Kataraka, Shegele. Why, why don't you show them? So they will see an idea, have an idea of what happens when that glory is, is asked to arise, to scatter the enemy. For example, in Exodus chapter 14, when they were crossing the rest, he showed that particular verse where he said, and the angel of God that goes before the children of Israel went behind them, and that glory crowd shifted behind, and let's see what he did to the Egyptians that were pursuing them. He pulled out all the tires from their chariots, 
and made them to start drowning in the mud. You know, the, land, the sea has been divided. The land is dry. Look at it. And the angel of, the, of God, which, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind because the Egyptians were pushing behind. And the pillar of cloud, look at the glory that went before their face, stood behind them. He now moved behind. The next verse. And he came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, that's the Egyptians, but he gave light by night to these, that's the children of Israel, so that one came not near the other all night. Lift those up, say, say Lord, cover me with your glory again. You know, this is the ultimate thing God wants to send you here with. You see what it is? Evil cannot come near. Danger cannot come near you. The enemy cannot get close. Verse 21. Ah, that's when Moses now stretched his hand over the sea, the water came and killed, wiped out all the Egyptians. One of the things that he did, I'm just trying to pick out, the whole chapter is very interesting. Okay, the Lord said to Moses, lift up your rod, stretch it over the sea and divide it so that the children of Israel may go on dry ground. And behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians and they will follow them and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon his host and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. Next verse. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh and his chariots and his horsemen. Okay, let me stop this, but... I'm trying to show them that verse on the wheels of the chariots being pulled off. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the middle of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. Anyway, the next verse. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians. How? Through the pillar of fire and of cloud. Oh, even God is using that light to see what's happening inside and he troubled the host of the Egyptians the next verse and took off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighted for them against Egypt the people knew that it was God imagine driving your car all the ways pull off everybody's way and you have to be dragging through you know why God did that so they can't escape so that the flood can cover them and that's what finally happened they died there say it one more time. arise oh God let your enemies be scattered you know Bible prayers get Bible results okay transmit there are three ways you transmit number one the first law of transmission is contact I've been doing quite a number of it here, laying hands on people. And you can see the sad thing. And even when I wanted, and God told me to do that, basically because there are some people that have this incurable disease in their body. He said, as you do that, I'll take care of it. So I decided to just do it for everybody. Even while that was going on, there were some people who would be there. They are still talking. Eh, do you know my problem, sir? Ah. So they can't get that. They miss the connection. They lose that anointing because they are not connecting to it. They are not connecting to it. Contact. I can see there is a socket here. So you plug your TVs, you plug. We use it a lot in our houses. Put extension wire plug. That's the law of contact and then transmission of energy happens. So that's why they drew wire to your house to bring you electricity. That's contact. Then you have your control switch. You have all the, those are the law of contact. You see wires. You see sockets. And when it comes to the law of contact, you see men of God. You see, you have to lay hands on somebody. That's what Jesus said. Lay hands and they shall be healed. And so many a time in ministering the Holy Spirit baptism, we lay hands on people. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the law of contact. See, even around this state, they have sockets. So anointed men and women becomes like contact points.
But do you know the problem with contact? It is analog. Like those days, our telephone, it has to come by wire. Can you imagine you are here now? You want to call somebody in the U.S. You have to draw wire from your house to here. You can see the limitations. You have to find where there is a socket or where to be able to make a call. You start looking for phone booths. Those are days of contact. It's analog. And there are a lot of people, that's where they put their faith. God has, God has other dimension and they are stuck. Okay, there's another way God transmits his power. is by radiation. Radiation is through space. That method was created to do what contact is not able to do. Contact is most applicable when you are dealing with a small group. One on one. Small group. You can have all that time to lay hands. Radiation is when you are dealing with multitudes. Especially people that are not present. Radiation is the law that said there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Remove the distance. You think it's only the people that came out here, pastor, to touch them that will get the thing. No way. The man outside can get it first and the one standing in my front will not get it because he's not making connection. If he's making connection, he can get it. But the man outside can get it much faster and even clearer. So when we do crusades or when you have large meetings like this, you can't do contact. Nobody has that strength. And one day the Lord talked to me about this. Many years ago he said, if you just keep laying hands, you wear out yourself, you'll die before your time. Because even though the Holy Spirit does not die, your body, you wear out your youth. He said, use the law of radiation. Radiation is transmission of power through wave. That's how solar energy comes to us here. Do you see wire from the sun to the earth? No. That's how you transmit, communicate. Now you touch your mobile phone. It's mobile technology. And you talk to somebody in America without drawing wire from your phone to his house. And the amazing thing about radiation is that anything that can transmit sound can transmit it. You see like my voice now through the speakers. If you can hear, you can be healed. Anything that can transmit pictures can transmit it. Anything that can transmit wave can transmit it. You see, TV can stretch my hands now. And millions of people will be healed at home. Radio, internet, YouTube, phone. You connect your phone right now. We are praying for people. And people at home start getting healed. Radiation removes the limit so that when god is moving it's not only those who are present that can get it and it's not only those who can touch the pastor that can get healed zachariah 10 verse 1 said axi of the lord reign in the time of letter rain one of the ways radiation come people just pray and the holy spirit is poured out everyone say poured out say poured out you know how rain comes doesn't need wire or pipe poured out poured out that's how it happened on the day of Pentecost. there was nobody going ahead laying hands on those heads we didn't see jesus laying hands on anybody holy spirit was poured out and then psh. look at it ask the lord rain in the time of the latter rain we're in the time of the latter rain so all you need to do is ask everybody lift up your hands say pour your spirit afresh on me release special anointing on me i'm leaving this service with it already many of us have got it to i'm just giving you knowledge so that you can make sense of it many has already collected it say pour your spirit afresh upon us pour your spirit afresh upon this city pour your spirit afresh on your church pour your spirit afresh on my family pour your spirit afresh on me i want to leave this meeting carrying that glory Ask God rain in the time of latter rain. Look at what he said. He will make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. To what? Everyone grass of the field. You see what? Radiation gets to everybody. Everyone grass of the field. That's what Joel said. I'll pour out my spirit upon how many flesh? All flesh. How many flesh? You see, contact is only who the pastor can reach. Who the man of God can reach. Radiation 
all flesh. Radiation, everyone grass of the field. We need to start praying for outpouring of the Holy Ghost, praying for revival. Even in your morning prayer, and make it one of the issues. God, pour your spirit on Nigeria. Pour it on Lagos. And you will hear people getting converted in the street. Some in the office. Some will just wake up and start crying. What is happening to you? I don't know. And then they will start confessing their sins. And then they start. You, will hear, you see people gather in the street. They are just next thing the glory hits them. Let me ask you. When Apostle Ndobe was ministering, the glory hit him. Who did you see that went there to pour oil on him? Who did you see that went there to lay hands on him? Radiation. It can happen in the bedroom. It can happen in your bedroom. It can happen in your parlor. It can happen in the office. The thing will hit. Acts, I think Pastor Man was with me. We were in a hotel lobby in Abuja. Was he Abuja? Justin. Nobody. Well, all of a sudden, this thing hit. A hotel lobby that customers were coming. The thing hit all of us. We didn't even know when we, we uh, did we pray. I don't know how we responded that night. The thing hit. And when it hit, it covered the whole place. We we're just discussing, sharing about what God is doing and all that. The thing hit. And the next thing I just got up, looked in the direction of the, the what do you call these people that are checking people in? The thing hit both the receptionists and all those people. Hit. Customers. We were in a restaurant eating once and we were discussing because radiation, words, prayer, anything can carry sound. That can carry. But if you are we are discussing about what God is doing and sometimes when you start talking about his glory, he comes. He hits and then even people that came to eat, even people that were still eating, they were falling out and many of these people are unbelievers. So. And then somebody ran out and ran to the back and refused to come back in. And I asked the woman, what is wrong? Is he mad? He said, no. He said, he's one of his deaf and dumb. I said, go and call him. He will hear. They went out. He refused to come. He asked, they are coming. He's running away. The evil spirit that caused that is reacting. So they said, what do we do? He's running away. I said, watch now what will happen. I said, open the door. I opened the door. I looked at him. I said, in the name of Jesus, come here. And he tumbled and rolled on the floor and got here. This is where we were eating. This restaurant. Nobody planned for this. This is not church service. And he was laying there. And we rebuked the spirit of death and dumbness to come out. He vomited some whiting. And he started hearing and started. You know, at that moment, all those people that came to eat and some new customers that are coming, they stood at the door. Everybody knelt down and gave their life to Christ. Now, why am I telling you? God wants to do things outside church. The ending of this particular year, 50 days of glory, is not what happens in church now. It's when you live here. Hospitals. Some of you should go to hospitals and discharge people. Some of you should go to your homes and help. Some of you who have not been going for Christmas need to go home and help your family. Call them. Said, I know I'm the last one. I know I'm the, your younger brother. But this family, look at how things have been going. It's not that small boy again. I'm returning here with the power of the Holy Spirit. If everybody does not cooperate with you, don't worry. Let the few that cooperate release that thing on them break those chains you will see the prosperity that will hit the family within the next one year so by the next december when you call everybody will show up that's how i started it now i call my whole community shows up then they didn't take me serious some of my uncles say you know they have this pet name they call me ah look at this one when the thing happened the next year they are the ones that gave the invitation because radiation is transmitted by spoken word it's transmitted by waves lift those hands again say pour your spirit on my family pour it in my workplace pour it in my company pour it lord not just by people touching them let them know that there is god pour your spirit on nigeria let there be a fresh outpouring of the spirit on lagos let it come upon the workplaces upon the markets upon everyone let the spirit of conviction fall. Let it come even on the arm robbers. Let it fall in the camp of the Boko Harams. Let it fall.
You see, revival comes like radiation. It doesn't come because somebody laid hands. It comes transmission of power. Finally, I close with this. The last is convention. Convention is transmitting the power of God through a medium. I didn't do that. Now we're back. But in Kenya, it's cold like you're abroad. East Africa have this, you know, type of temperature. They don't have heat like we have in West Africa. Most houses don't have AC. It's over 90%. They don't put buy AC. They don't need it. Most of the year is cool. We're wearing jackets, sweaters inside to be able to. And so every morning to take our bath, I need hot water. The tap is so cold. So how do I get the hot water? I take a bucket of water to a socket and use the first slot contact, plug in a heater. The heater heats up the water. Remember, I'm the one that needs the energy. But the heater is not hitting me. It's hitting a medium called water. After the energy has been transferred to the water, I now take the energy from the water. Can you see what is going on? There's a middle person. That middle person is called point of contact. And it's, I mean, it's a medium. You transfer that power to a medium. That's how your phones are working here. The battery has been charged through contact. Now the battery, you take it and now go. No wire. Instead of phone connected to socket for you to call. No, you carry it because the battery is charged now. And there are even rechargers that are you finish charging, you carry them. Am I correct? They store power. That's what is called convention medium. Hey, I think you need to show them this. They will get it very well if they see it. Uh, John chapter 5, at the Jerusalem, there's a pool called Beside us. One, there's a pool called Beside us, and there lay a lot of impotent people, a lot of sick people. You know, you can see this lay a great multitude. Everyone said multitude. Impotent folks, blind, hot, withered, paralyzed people. What are they waiting for? Moving of the water. You see another method. Verse 4. Look at what happened. An angel of God will come down from heaven. So the angel has been in the presence of God. He carries that energy. But see what he does. It will come. Instead of going to people, he will jump inside the water. The energy transferred to the water. Then he will leave. Anybody that jumps in that water, if you like, they have, you have, let them burn you twisted. You are getting out. Your body won't twist. A man will start walking. But blind, he jumps in. The eyes open. Lame, deaf, he jumps in the ear open. Look at it. The angel of God, a certain time, the angel of God will come into the pool, trouble the water. Everyone say, trouble the water. So when the anointing hits any medium, that's what they mean by trouble. It's now charged. And whosoever then was first that gets into that water was made whole. Whatever the disease he had. Look at the next verse. There was a man that was there. He has been there for a long time, 38 years. There was a certain man that has been there which has had infirmity for 38 years. He's crippled. And Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had now been there for a long time. And he said to him, Without, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be healed? Some of these questions you think, why are you asking somebody that is in hospital whether he wants to be healed? He, he wants to be healed. That's why he's in hospital. No. The reason is that there is... There is transmission involved in this thing. Not just that God is available or the power of God is available. There is transmission. Look at what the man said. I don't have any man to take me into the water when he's troubled or to put me in the pool while I'm coming. Because he's crippled now. He has to drag himself on the ground. Sharp guys will rush him, get healed and go home. Other people will come. Can you imagine I have been lying there for 38 years? How did Jesus get him out of the trouble? He didn't carry him to the power. He spoke. Rise up, take up your bed and go home. 
And that was the end of the case. If it's my dad, he won't get healed. I had to retrain him because the only thing he understands is the medium. The medium. He is sick. Call him, say, put the phone in your ear. You are wasting it. you finish praying, he won't get it. He will tell you, oh, my son, he is now getting worse. Because he's not connecting to the power. His mind is not on that. What he is, he said, please, just bless oil and send to me. That last one you sent to me, if you see how powerful it was. And I'm trying to get his faith from, away from, because I want you to understand God, so he's not trapped. Okay, so look at what I did. I called Pastor Law. I said, open a bottle of oil. He did. I said, hold the phone in your ear. I released the power of God into that oil. In the name of the same method I was trying to use for him, I used it. Bless the oil. But he thought he, the oil came from Lagos. They carried it to him. The moment he touched him, he got healed. What is the issue? He, his mind is locked up on that method. If you bless water, sprinkle on him, he's fine. He will get healed, no matter what is wrong with him. One time he was, I said, go to hospital. Sent him money. He said, I don't know. The doctors didn't find anything. The thing is killing me. I said, let me pray for you on the phone. He said, leave that one. Just send me oil. Or handkerchief. Or water. You see, do you know why we don't like doing it? Not because God doesn't walk through that. But because of false ministries and false prophets. Blessing salt, blessing sand, giving people sand to chew. Acts 19, I close with that. Acts 19, look at Paul. Special God did special miracle. That's medium. Again, God did special miracle by the hands of Paul. Contact is not the only way the power of God can be transmitted. You are crying because you think if we can't go in, God is now limited. You see what the problems are. Very important. That's why I'm explaining it. If the man pastor can't get there, then God can't get there. Who told you that? The mistake we make when it comes to deliverance, we think it's the deliverance minister that does the job. Jesus said, I cast out devil by the spirit of God. It's not the man, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Look at it here. And special miracles was wrought by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. So whether it's head tie or a apron or wrapper, the anointing touches it, that's instrument of healing. They were brought to the sick. What happened to the sick? And the diseases did what? Departed from them. What happened to the evil spirits? And the evil spirits went out of them. What is it that drove? There is nobody there shouting, come on. You know what people think is, you must shout, come on, come on, come on, until your voice, you lose your voice. Elisha, the prophet, used this method to heal Naaman. And Naaman got angry. Because Naaman came to his house and he told him, go to the, the Jordan, wash, dip yourself seven times and the leprosy will vanish. What is it? The word has been spoken. So the angel will go there and stand in Jordan, discharge the anointing, just like the one you saw a pull up beside her. But guess what? Naaman got angry. If you show it to them, you will see. You know what, what, what he said? He said, ah, I thought he would come out first, at least will welcome me, a whole army general. Then cried to his God. Look at it. Naaman was angry and went away and said, Behold, I thought, everyone said, I thought. Forget what you think. That's what has kept you in one place. Learn God's word. I say you need to put this thing inside your system. I thought it would surely come out to me. It's a dignitary. Number two, and stand and call on the name of his God. So you expect him to pray long prayers. They think it's the long longevity of the prayer. Prayer only plays a role in generation. You have turned the generator on. Now, let's talk about transmitting it. You can see the kind of power in this service. You want it to end here, everything will return back to heaven. What about the people in the hospital? 
What about the one you left at home? Are you the only one that needs help? What about your brothers? What about your friend? You might have somebody sick at home. So, uh -huh, Pastor, you have to follow me. Oh. My mom is like critically ill at home. That's why I'm explaining this to you. Don't put God in a box. It's too big for any container you build. I thought he would come cry to the name of his God and then strike his hand over the place. Since I have this leper, he needs to touch me and recover the leper. Because he didn't do it, he's angry. The small girl that was following him, a maid, though, a maid had more revelation than the man. His servant came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had asked you to do something big, would you not have done it? How much rather then? The only thing he told you is to go and wash and be clean. At that moment, he calmed his anger down and went down. Deep first. Because he also complained. He said, don't we have rivers in Assyria? And then, uh, what is special about River Jordan? He thought it's about the water. It's like he said, oil. It's not oil. Oh. Anybody can go to market now and buy oil. Well, bring me one. Once we bless it. Like this one here. Once we bless it. And it doesn't have to be oil. It can be the... Everybody bring out your hanky. Wave it in there. Hey, stand up on your feet. Father, I release the anointing of God on all these clothes. All of them. All of them. Let it be released by radiation. Baba Wakias. Wave it again. Show you are an usher. Come, come, come. No, no, you. You, the usher man. <laughs> Collect the one in his hand. Collect. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. He wants to take it. <laughs> you see, that's his own. See, see, this, this woman's whatever. Even this is your stuff. You see? You see? That's the lady's home. Can I borrow your own? Can I borrow? Off! You see? It has nothing to do with whether it's my handkerchief or this person's handkerchief. It has nothing to do with it. The fire of God! The fire of God! The fire of God! The fire of God! Father, all this turns into instruments of deliverance. You lay it on the sick, they will recover. On people that have mental illness, their senses will come back. People that have tumor, the tumor will die. People that can bear children, their womb will open. In the name of Jesus.